Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about season one of Tell Me Your Secrets. This is a spoiler review. I'm going to be talking about the entire season of Tell Me Your Secrets. So if, you, if you've not seen it in its entirety, do not listen to this because I don't want to spoil anything for you. Go watch the entire season and come back if you're curious about hearing my thoughts about this season. But letting you know ahead of time, it is a spoiler review. In general, I thought this season was great. It had a lot of interesting twists and turns. First and foremost, let's talk about Emma's story. Well, Karen, Emma, I'm, I might end up flip-flopping back and forth between them. But obviously going into this, you know, I knew a little bit just based on the trailer. But I think that it, the trailer does a good job of not telling you everything. Like a lot of the, obviously a good job of hiding a lot of the twists and turns in the story. And I like the fact is that she is this person trying to escape her past. She has this new, because uh, I was wondering like, did she like, get a like make a fresh start for herself like she got away from doing something and then got caught up in something else like everything going on with saint jerome i thought like maybe but like for us to find out in the, uh from the beginning like no she was in jail but she got put in witness te uh, pe uh the protection program i'm sorry uh, for stumbling over that and i thought that was so fascinating you know that being kind of her jump off point you know going from karen to emma and obviously kind of getting this new life in this new start but the complicated thing of obviously the past not being too far behind especially cuz she's got to deal with the whole thing of like i mean it's it's never it was never going to die down considering the severity of it but also when you have mary like in like making appearances and you know keeping it going cuz she's still pursuing Karen because it's like you have to know something about my missing daughter we'll get into that but later on but first and foremost I thought it was interesting how Karen is used at well Emma in a sense that like uses like how her memory is kind of this plot device in the sense of like she's not a reliable I mean it's not even like the story is necessarily told 100% from her point of view but you can never trust her point of view, especially her memory, because it's the whole thing of, I don't remember, which a lot of people think she's lying about it, but she's not. The only person that kind of gives her leeway in that is Pete. He's like, you must have gone through something traumatic that led to this. But obviously, over the course of the season, we get glimpses of it, but every time she's like, I get a feeling. I don't think she 100% sees what the audience see. So it's interesting how they're doing that. Like, Emma's get this feeling of dread of like something's wrong but she can't quite picture it and i like that the show kind of misleads you with these red herrings making you think oh maybe the narrative you know because it's like oh maybe emma isn't as innocent as we think she is and then you know especially because as the season progresses like her memory becomes more and more unreliable and i mean and i think this is such an interesting thing from her perspective even her being like maybe i did it maybe i'm guilty it's not like a thing of like no i couldn't have done it like the fact that she's questioning herself uh because over the course of the season, we realized there's certain things she felt like she was so sure of, but now with more of her memories piecing together, she's starting to think, what if I'm completely wrong about this whole thing? And she kind of was, and I think that's such an interesting thing. I mean, it's that complicated thing of like, you were with a serial killer. That's always going to be the thing of, how could you not know? He killed nine women, brutally, broke their arms so they couldn't fight back, broke their uh, feet so they could broke their hands and broke their feet. So they couldn't fight back or run and then bash their head, head in uh, with a weapon. And it's with a, not just any weapon, a hammer. It's like, how could you not? If you were together that entire time, like, how could you not know about? It? So it's that, it's that complicated thing of, you know, I, I, we've seen plenty of stories recently like The Undoing and even on Big Sky. Like, how could you not know what your partner is up to? type of situation and especially her not having any memory of it I'm sure that it just once again everyone looked at her like she was guilty you know and I thought that was such an interesting and complex angle to her story because like I said they start getting to her maybe she's thinking I'm responsible especially with this whole like I said St. Jerome storyline which we'll get into later on but um obviously you know Pete kind of talks about it later on it's like oh you're just using this as an excuse because you don't want to deal with your past but it's interestingly enough dealing with all the St. Jerome stuff I mean dealing with a lot of stuff like I guess all these traumatic and messed up things happening kind of triggered some parts of her memory because it's like, oh, I was in a situation that was scary and messed up like this, and it just kind of kicks in that part of her brain and starting to kind of unlock those memories. So I just thought that was kind of fascinating. Like I said, just like her entire memory not being what she thought it was, um, especially because, like, like I said, like her reality and like her memories and reality start blurring together. Like a lot of times when she's with Tom, she's thinking about 
kid because I, it's that complicated thing of like he was this monster but he was the man I loved I loved him before he became a monster I didn't love him because he was a monster which a lot of people would say like oh you were with him because of what he was so I just thought that was such an uh like I keep saying over and over again I thought that was an interesting plot device and how that you know Emma struggles to kind of find out, you know, what happened to Jess when no one's kind of believing her because she's realizing something is happening in St. James that, like, no one is talking about, no one's taking notice. I mean, it was interesting, like, how they met in the first place, too, like, her bashing Rose's face into the um, mirror, and that's how her and Jess, like, hit it off. Um, and then there's a whole Abel storyline that we got weaved into, but we still don't know, like, what the hell that's all about. I'm assuming... I'm just throwing this out there. I think Abel is just some, like, dude that, like, way, like, he's kind of like the, probably, like, l someone that's lost, who finds lost lambs type of situation, I think. And she's probably like, I wasn't supposed, I'm not supposed to talk about him because, like, if I do, like, what he does, potentially helping people, I don't know. We, we don't know the ins and outs of what Abel's situation is because the name comes up and even the little boy Jay, it seemed like he might know something, but he didn't say anything or maybe he didn't know anything at all. But I, I think that's such an interesting angle, too, like, that Emma stuff kind of overwrites, like, because the whole, because I think the Jess stuff was kind of in the background a lot of the times, like, it kind of weaves in and out. I mean, to be fair, Emma's got so much pulling her attention because she finds out, oh, she wrote that letter to Parker and was basically breaking up with him and he killed himself. And that kind of drove her to the point she was popping pills and drinking and it's like, oh, she... You know, now she's wondering whether or not she hallucinated the whole Jess thing, but then talking to Jay, and just it just didn't make a lot of sense, you know, for, like, uh, Jess to just be going, like, decide to go with her parents. So it's like, she know, like, Emma figured, like, St. Jerome is lying about what's happening here, so. Kind of weaving that in with um, other story elements. Since I did bring up the whole thing about, you know, her memory kind of flipping upside down, let's talk about the, the Teresa thing. I thought that was, it, it took me a while before I jumped to that leap. It wasn't until um, her friend from like when she was cutting hair, like back in the day when she was with Kit before everything, before going to prison and everything, that was like, she had this memory of her friends like, oh, they're happy for me. It was my birthday. It was like, no, you're, you might be misremembering that. Your friends were adamant about you not going out with them. And then Eric Cameron was like, wait, what? It's like, no, they were happy for me. It's like, no, they kind of had a feeling like you shouldn't go out with them. Like, why did they have that feeling? And even Emma asked, uh, was, uh, the lady that she worked with, like, why did you say, cause she remembers it correctly now. Of like, yeah, don't go out with him tonight. It's like, why not? Because it turns out Teresa and him were banging and it's like, wait, I, and she's like, I caught them. And it's like, but it's like, yeah, you know, it's like, you know, on my birthday, it's like, no, it was like a month beforehand. And Emma's like, well, yeah, you know, Emma's like, wait, no, that doesn't make any sense. He didn't know her then. It's like, yes, it was a month before your birthday and they were banging it out. And it's like, wait, what? So I thought that was so fascinating how that whole situation ended up um, playing out. Just because that moment right there was where I was kind of suspicious. I was like, you two knew each other beforehand. Because now it makes you wonder. It brings into question all her memories with Teresa up till now. Well, because Kit was like, get rid of her. And you're like, wait. Because at first I was like, because she kind of saw Kit for who he really is. So I started thinking like, oh, Kit is the one that actually killed her. You think you did it because you got in this memory of you holding the hammer and everything. And then like, obviously like the Amy Walker thing of like, oh, you, ex you see Amy's body. But then like later on when you think you're potentially responsible for her um for um for Teresa dying, you see it's actually um you see Teresa's body. So like she's so confused and but then she has memories of like hitting her in the head with a rock. So it's like so much of her memory is jumbled, yeah, and it's so interesting. Um, especially that Amy Walker thing. Because from the beginning, Jake, you know, when uh Amy's dad came in to be like, Oh, this all fits his profile, what did Jake say? She, because Amy was black, she didn't fit his profile of like women he went after. And now it makes sense why. He wasn't the one that killed Amy. This was all Teresa. I was like, that's fascinating. Because Mary ended up finding out about, you know, because of the conversation Amy's mom had with um, Parker that it implied that he had an accomplice. And so obviously everything started being like, oh, and then obviously Karen was the one responsible. It's like, nope, in actuality, it was Teresa. 
And it's just because in our mind, we have this image of like, oh, her being this innocent person when in actuality, you know, it's like even that once again, that's so interesting when you add your own perspective to something like that photograph of like, here's Parker not too long uh, in the same place as my daughter before she disappeared. And it's like and later on, Emma says, this is the moment they fell in love. It's like how you can infer something from something that it tells you this, but it's like when you're coming at something from a certain perspective, because it, that, isn't that what they say about the truth? I could be mistaken. It's like there's this person's story and then there's this person's story and then there's the truth because it usually lies somewhere in between because you're always going to have your perspective on things. You're always going to view things from your lens. Because like, why would I? Why would you think like, oh, like uh, my daughter disappeared be, not because Parker killed her, but she ran off with him and fell in love with him knowing what he was and who he was. I mean, part of me was wondering like, well, maybe because I that whole thing – like I said, just because of how everything's kind of jumbled, I didn't know what to necessarily make of her circumstances at first. But it did seem like her and Parker had something first, and then I guess um, Emma came along, which that's an interesting angle too, because obviously the whole thing is like every woman's kind of a question mark, and then it's kind of revealed, wait, your heart, no, it was originally a question mark, but it's like what saved you is because Parker fell in love with you. And so you helped guide his hand to make it into a heart. But it was a question mark at first. You were going to be another victim until you made him fall in love with Not made him, but you accidentally saved your own life. And I was like, that's so fascinating. So maybe that's why Teresa was kind of like, oh, let's keep her around. Oh, she could be like our plaything or something like that. Because it makes you wonder which one of them was 100% in control in a relationship. Because I think things changed the moment Emma got added to the equation. I think that's when things changed. Because up until then, Parker was killing. That was his thing because he kind of felt like no one really saw him for him. And I think maybe he thought Teresa did. But then he met Emma and Emma kind of saw a different side of him. That I think it kind of brought back some form of humanity. So whoever the last victim was before Amy, that was the last person he killed. And I think, because she was supposed to probably, because I'm assuming, well, I could be mistaken. I'm assuming she was supposed to be the next victim and maybe that's what Teresa was kind of hoping. It's like, oh, you're bringing her in. Oh, you want to get close to her and then we're going to kill her. But maybe Parker had his reservations about it. So maybe Parker offered up a new victim, Amy, or Teresa found her herself, and it's like, oh, you're not going to do it? Fine, this is going to be mine. I, or maybe this was supposed to be her sign of love towards him. We don't know the whole ins and outs. But like I said, I thought that was such an interesting development of like, because I think it's so fascinating that literally the only monster not in this show was was Emma slash Karen. She's this person that's kind of vilified for this, but it turns out she's literally the, the only innocent person. I say other than that is Tom. Tom and her are the only innocent, well, Lisa too, and, and any victims necessarily in this show, like Jess or um, the girl that ended up like uh, Emma tried to stay from the hotel room. Like, those are victims, but it's like every every other like main, main character in this is a total shit bag, you know, which is so interesting. And I also, you know, I'm jumping around a little bit, but I do like the twist of light, you know, because even Emma being like, I don't know if she's still alive, but God save anyone that's crossed his path with her because it turns out, hey, she is alive. The moment I was wondering about that, I was like, yeah, you hit her in the head with a rock. You kind of assumed she was dead, but uh, I mean, even the final, I think the season finale is literally called The Dead Come Back, and that, there's layers to that just because of all the bodies that just start popping up and not so many bodies of like people being supposedly dead but coming back. Well, um, like that being John, Jess's body, and then obviously the whole reveal of like, oh, uh, Teresa's still alive. Which I think that's going to put a nail in the coffin of whatever Mary's whole thing is. If it comes out Teresa's alive, it's like, oh, I thought you said she said she killed her. Like, that's going to screw the pooch on that, which that's uh, Mary's a whole thing we're going to unravel soon enough. But I'm so, I'm so curious how that's going to, like, I think proving that Teresa's alive is going to ruin everything, I think. But um, the moment, like, the lady who was looking after her daughter, uh, Karen's daughter Freya was like, oh yeah, no, Karen's come to visit her. The mom was like, shit, because Karen, um, um, God, uh, Teresa never wanted Karen to have, um, Parker's baby in the first place. She was like, oh, you think I'm going to let you have 
his baby? No, it was me and him before you, and it will always be him and me. And so that's why she's going to want Freya to keep Freya, because it's like, not only am I able to take your daughter from you, so it's middle fingers to Karen, but it's also like, this way I get to keep a piece of Parker, and, and he'll, it'll be mine, mine and mine alone type of thing. Uh, which, because that's the complicated thing about like a character like Teresa. She is as jacked up as she is, because it turns out, like obviously she was molested by, you know her coach because the way Emma talks about it it's like I guess like um I guess at some point during them getting close and everything maybe she hadn't a hundred percent going off the deep end once again she knew who Parker was she was with him despite everything but I think on some level that human element came out of Parker but maybe it also came out of you know um Teresa as well so I think she did open up about what happened to her because that's why Emma's like yeah it's been going on since she was 13 so it's like you wanted her there um on this, the, the swim team, even though she wanted to quit, you kept sending her back to her abuser over and over again. Because they already hinted to that earlier in the episode when her brother is going through um, those albums and he sees like a swim team picture and the um, coach's face is messed. I was like, he's he did he's doing some nasty shit. Like you like you immediately infer that, but you didn't. I thought that's because I figured that's why she ran away and never came back, and then she got mixed up in the whole Parker and. Uh, Karen situation, but obviously, like I said later on, we get the reveal of like, oh, she's kind of neck deep. And what happened with the coach drove her to Parker and kind of led to her kind of getting seduced to that because it's like she was so messed up and she met up with someone that was just as messed up in his own right. And it just sent her deeper and further off the edge, sadly, you know, so... I just think it's that complicated thing of like monsters aren't necessarily born, they're made. And so you kind of feel bad for Teresa, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take away the fact is that not only did she do something terrible like killing Amy Walker, but we also see at the end of it, she's still killing. So she is through and through a monster and, you know, shit like Emma's daughters with that same monster, because if it might be a situation that if Freya rejects her love, who knows if Freya might be on the other end of that hammer or something, you know? It's like, because there's only going to be so much like, oh, you, you remind me, you look so much like your dad. That might keep it going for a while, but if Freya doesn't love her the way she wants to be loved, then things could easily go sideways. That that rejection could send her even further off the deeper end than she already is. We'll, we'll see. She's going to be still killing while playing Mother May. I mean, I guess it's no different from Parker playing the loving boyfriend while he's off killing women, you know? But I guess there's an even extra layer of that because it's like, oh, you, you, your, your girlfriend, not even Karen, but Teresa, was all about you doing that. So... Because he even said this thing to Emma at the end where it was basically like, if we if kind of forget everything, because if you do, don't, like, it's going to cost us everything. I guess the whole point was... Forget about Freya because if they find out about Freya, like she'll be taken away, she'll be put in child services, and we'll never get her back despite anything else. So this way, because Parker wanted them to be a family, so that's why I think like Parker leaned more towards um, Emma than he did Teresa. I think that should have been a key sign too, like during that uh, Amy scene when Teresa was covered in blood. It's like it doesn't look like you. If you were, if he attacked you, I'm sure you would be dead. Like not just coming out the room like that. So that should have been a sign. But I just, I guess my th brain was so caught up in the moment of like, oh, trying to get away, her water breaking, and it's not until I was like, because I was flip flopping. Because at first, at that point, I was thinking like. I thought when she went in there, she was going to find, like, what she thought she saw herself with the hammer. I thought she was going to see Teresa with the hammer, but she didn't. And she picked up the hammer and everything. I was like, okay. And then Teresa came around the corner and was like, oh, I guess you were kind of a victim as well in this. But it's like, that should have been a key sign. You're covered in blood as well. Like, there was kind of no time for explaining. Just let's get out of here. Even the fact that she attacked Parker. But maybe that's because... Parker was trying to rationalize things, so maybe that's why she did what she did. Granted, it was just a scratch across his face from the hammer, but still, like, I guess it's just kind of like, no, let me go take care of this, and once she's gone, it's just going to be you and me, her and the baby are gone, it's going to be you and me forever like it's always meant to be, like, you know. A very, very jacked up Romeo and Juliet story, I guess, is kind of what that's kind of supposed to be, but uh, regardless. So there's that angle of things. Let's talk about P. Now, Pete's story has some waves, ups and downs. Like, from the very beginning, I was super suspicious of Pete the moment we met Lisa. And Lisa was like, oh, like, you know, I once we found out that was one of his patients, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Aren't, aren't you crossing some, like, boundaries, bro? Like, that's, you're not supposed to date your patient. I'm like, even if she's a former patient, that seems unethical. 
Um, especially later on when we find out, oh, he's bugging her phone. He's listening in on her sessions. It's like, dude. I mean, even Emma says it later on, like, oh, he has boundary issues. And he kind of does. And it's like the way he's so into, like, Emma's life and stuff like that. It's like when I call, you pick up and stuff like that. I'm like, wow, you are kind of... And that's why Emma's kind of having her reservations about him, especially when it t- turns out he has ties to St. Jerome and everything. But then he kind of clears the board a little bit about, like, why he got fired. There's that part on his record that kind of got that's redacted and it's like well what was that about it's like if i had done something do you think i would be the psychiatrist that i am they would never let me be in the position i am so it turns out him and lisa met because she was at saint jerome she was 16 he was 25 they fell in love i'm still wrong but um he helped kind of get her away from that situation and sometime later they reconnected but it's still because even um even Lisa talked about it. It is this comp. It's unethical in many different regards because she said it herself. She he knows everything about me from our therapy sessions, and I know nothing about him. And that's kind of how he. I guess he wants it that way because you know because even Emma kind of hits at it, and the story kind of plays into it. Like maybe there are things that you're hiding, but at one point in time, you're. I'm. I'm actually like, oh. Despite everything, Pete's actually a good guy, huh? He's here for Emma. He's like, you think you're a murderer? He's like, no. He's like, trust me, I would know. I would look in you. But then Emma's like, maybe you're just seeing what you want to see, you know, because you're in love with me. He's like, oh, you think I'm in love? He's like, I'm not in love with you. But it did seem like he is obsessed with her. But maybe he's like that with any of his patients, which is a good thing. That, but the fact is that he's trying that he's trying to help Emma. That he does believe, like, I don't think you're responsible for this. You know, I'm trying to help you out. Like, if we can piece together your marriage. Memory, like helping her realize like no like that heart is only a heart because you helped make it into a heart it was originally going to be a you know a question mark like a brought up earlier like you would have been a victim if he didn't fall in love with you so at first you're kind of like oh man pete might not be that bad of a guy it's like okay granted he's lying to his wife about what he's up to uh but then later on she's kind of like i need to get i need a break from you because for one it's like you've got so many secrets and even emma at one point being like well maybe that's what you like because she's like no one really knows all that stuff about you. It's like the fact that you kept this a secret from your wife. It's like maybe you enjoy secrets, but maybe it's also because he has so many damn secrets of his own. He can't let any aspect of himself to be too open because if he's too vulnerable, he might let the wrong thing slip. I think maybe that's what it is. Obviously, there's a lot to Pete we still don't know, but we found out later on that he's not the one who killed Jess, but he helped dispose of the body. You know, or at least making made the promise to Bodhi, like, oh, it's not going to come back up. You don't have to worry about it. That's going to disappear. It's so interesting that you're mixed up in all, but maybe because he's so guilty because of all the stuff that he's mixed up in, that's why he does love Lisa because he's trying to keep an eye on her to make sure she's okay, but also probably trying to make sure she doesn't talk about what went down, like trying to help her forget all that. So he, I think it is a thing of like all these, like, I think he has a bit of a savior complex. He wants to save, you know, because it's that thing of like you kind of want people to love you. And so you're trying to save them. You're trying to help them. But it's also because you kind of want their love. I think on some level he does love Emma because even later on, Buddy's like, oh, I might have to go see your girl. He's like, what, Karen? He's like, stay away from her. Don't touch her. It's like there's a level of him that's like because I think for him, he sees them as victims, these women that were cast in this like terrible terrible situation and he wants to be there to help them so I think it's so it it, it creates this complicated power dynamic because he's the person with all the power because once again these are women he knows everything about like they've talked to him about everything and they know nothing about him but like I said I think because he's mixed up in all this St. Jerome stuff it makes him that much more determined to want to save them because it's like it's almost like making up for the crimes like I'm t- I'm responsible for a lot of stuff I let a lot of stuff at St. Jerome go I've lied to Lisa saying that it was over when in actuality it wasn't and I think to make up for that he's trying to save Emma because there's that whole co- thing that Emma and Esther did where it's like put you you know and he does it too where it's like put your sins in a stone and one by one and throw them in the water and as they sank your 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 sins is kind of gone and he's like well god damn it give me one of those stones it's like that should have been a key sign right there that they were just kind of winking and nodded like obviously there was more to pee but it's like it's a complicated thing of like he's not a hundred percent a bad guy but he knew about the jest thing even making emma feel crazy about it at first and even making lisa feel crazy because she was like no there's stuff going on there and you're saying that she's crazy but it's like no but even that then he's like oh babe you're you really do you hear all the stuff you're saying it doesn't make any sense she's like no like me we're leaving for a while so it sounds like um 
he's she's taking their daughter as well because even um she said it during her therapy session that he's a good father just not a good husband you know so i just i it makes you kind of go flip-flopping on uh pete unless he's willing to come forward about everything then you know but it also would implicate himself so that's the thing of like you want everyone to open up about their trauma and what they've been through but you're not willing to open up to the terrible things that you've done or at least maybe you didn't do anything but your non-action led to a lot of stuff happening you've known for a while maybe there's dirt that they have on him so that's why because he talked about it at the end that he wants out but Bodhi is like oh no no now you're you're in too deep you're already in too deep you're even deeper now there's no getting out of this so that was kind of um, an interesting development. I'm curious to see kind of where things go from Pete, like where he'll kind of potentially good guy, bad guy in it to save his own skin. Is he still going to try his best to help Emma, especially considering she's kind of neck deep in all of this as well? We'll kind of have to wait and see. Then we had to jump into the complex thing and person that is Mary. Now that it's her story in particular makes me flip flop a lot because I feel bad for her considering everything that she went through. Like she's she's entitled to go a little stir crazy considering her daughter never getting answers. Obviously, she built a foundation around this, but that's the problem. Like it became her life. It became her obsession. Like to the point she's willing to hurt anyone to get the answer she wants. She does it multiple times. She exposed that moment that like Amy, Amy's mom was like, okay, like Walker Parker didn't kill my daughter. He says he didn't at least, which we now obviously have context of like, well, he wasn't lying. He wasn't the one that did it, but he knew as hell, sure as hell who did it. But um, like I said, it's just it's just interesting how that all ends up folding together. But in her desperation to get. You know, that aspect of like, oh, Parker actually had a partner. She cut that part out and posted it everywhere. But that was a moment between Amy's mom and Parker. And now, like, because in that moment, she also shared the fact is that she was kind of having an affair. That, like, there was no intimacy between her and her husband because all her husband could see was kind of like their daughter. And he used to be her comfort, but now she found someone else as a comfort. Um, also, like, the reason why she ran over the dog, which became his new comfort, um, the reason why is because she was in a hurry to get back to her lover or get away from her lover or whatever the case may be. So, yes, Mary cut all that stuff out, but her son later on is like, no, I don't blame Amy's mom for slapping you. And even saying, like, you don't, you have a, you're lucky you have a son like that, but you don't deserve to have a son like Jake. Because Jake's like, you took this moment, this intimate moment, a moment that wasn't yours, and you exposed it to a world that was hers. Like, because she's so desperate. Like, you could, like I said, you could start seeing the armor's crack, like the, cr like, cracks in the armor early on. Just because, like, it's almost like she doesn't realize, like, how neglectful she is to her own son. Because it's like, he doesn't say it, but there's an element of, Mom, I'm here. I get you lost, Teresa. Because um, Jake and his dad want to kind of move on. But she's like, no, you guys do whatever you want to. It's like, no, we want to do this together as a family. We can't, it can't just be us moving on and you still here holding out hope for you know, um, for Teresa, you know, th there, there can't be any of that. It, it, there's no actual healing in that way, but for like, she, she can't let go because if she does, it'd be kind of accepting that her daughter's dead. And it's like, she's keeping that hope alive. And it's like, and I think it becomes that, it, it becomes that complicated thing because you don't want to be that person that's kind of like, is she delusional? It's like, no, like someone wanting to keep faith, someone wants, wanting to believe, is that wrong? It is when they start causing issues in other you know once again like amy's mom like kind of got dragged into that because it's like yeah you cut around it but it's like now he's going to be asking me questions because she amy's mom wanted her to be like tell my husband just i you know i he's bipolar and he'll lapse uh lapse onto this whole thing parker had nothing to do with our daughter's death like even though t which it makes this whole situation that much f much more effed up because your daughter killed their daughter which makes you exposing that situation even more effed up like it's so like complicated there's no simple solution in that day it's like not only did your daughter cause pain to that family you caused pain to that family as well and some arguments could be like mother like daughter to a certain extent which is effed up to say considering Teresa went down this route in a combination of her mom and because because it seems like a lot because a lot of what Mary does is for herself, you know, she makes it seem like it's for other people. Once again, the foundation exists because I don't want other families to go through what I'm going through, but it's like true. And it, 
truth be told is she made it for the purpose of I want some answers for what happened to my daughter. But at the same time, it's like, is it wrong that she's trying to do you doing something good and it being born from something selfish? Like, you know, like, is that wrong? You know, is it can you blame someone for being selfish under these circumstances and then building something good out of that selfishness? Like, so that's why I'm like. It makes me conflicted about her as a character, but also the fact is that she's willing to use a monster like John. We find out he's a because I I I picked that up in the trailer like oh he went to jail like how is he I, at first I was like is he a private detective or something but then like watching the trailer a second time I picked up the fact that he was like oh he was in jail what was he in jail never would have crossed my mind to be like oh he's a rapist I was like you what you using someone like him to hunt people someone down and. Yes, he had his reservations about it, but like that's also another issue too. She set loose a monster. He said, "I don't want to do this at first because he wants to keep." You know, I I, I don't know what to say on that aspect of like rehabilitation of someone who's committed a crime like he has. Like, what is the layers of rehabilitation? Because even his own sister was like, you can't be in my life or my daughter's life. It's like, you didn't just rape those two women. You destroyed their lives. I mean, on top of that, we also found out he's raped 14 women and he's only gotten caught by two because they showed that early on when he had taken that picture of Emma and Tom together and he was looking at it. Like, there were all these other pictures. I was like, you only got caught for two of the women. So you're not just like... You are a serial rapist of the largest magnitude, but the reason why Mary went to him is because of his skill of understanding, like, how he got so close to these women is he kind of inserted himself in their lives and kind of gave them what they wanted or needed. It's kind of like how he phrased it. But it's like, she's just responsible for all the terrible stuff John did because she supplied him with the money and the resources to do what he did. Yes, it you know because she justifies it later on by being I needed to find a monster by uh, getting a monster of my own, and it's the whole thing about like obviously like he's the wolf and she's Chloe. It's like you're sending you thought you were sending a wolf, a defanged, declawed wolf after a vicious monster of a wolf, but it's like no, he had his fangs and his teeth sharpened the entire time, you know, and that, that's also why I think it's so messed up that John wants to criticize Emma I'm like. Because in some twisted way, he kind of fell for Mary. It's like, oh, we're, we're kind of in this together. You're my, No, I'll call you Mary from now on. You're my Mary. And so, like, he latched onto her, I think, like he does all the women. And I think... Because I was also wondering about the whole thing of, like, when he had her, like, oh, swallow the gum. And she spit in his face. He was like, good girl. And he kept it. I don't know whether that was just kind of like a, oh, I'm keeping a piece of you. I thought he was keeping that as evidence because, like, oh, your DNA's here? Lo and behold, your DNA's on Esther's pillows and bed, too. I thought we were going to get, I thought it was going to go to that, but it never did. Doesn't mean it could potentially later go down that route later on. But that's also another thing, too. Not only did you sick this monster out there, and because he actually raped someone. Because at first, like, when he was burning his clothes, I was like, did he do something? It seemed like he did. But then later on, he let that woman, I guess it was like a, uh, a lady of the night he hired. And he was just like, you're going to run, you're going to go, and I'm going to burn these sheets so I don't have to smell you. So I was like, okay, so did he burn his clothes because he didn't want the scent of the woman on it? It's like, no, we find out later, he raped her. So it's like, he did that while he was in your quote-unquote employ. So like, once again, that's on you as well, you know? And But for her, she didn't care. All she cared about was getting to Karen. And, and it wasn't until things really, really escalated that she cared because she would still confide in him because it's the whole thing of like, you know, how do you live with the things that you've done? Because, you know, at that point, there was a whole thing about, oh, Teresa, she's dead. Like, we found her body and everything. And so that's sitting her spiraling in its own right. Um, but also, like, she killed Esther because Esther didn't give her the answer she wanted because at the end of the day, she was trying to protect her granddaughter, you know? And, you know, she has no one she can confide into. The only person she can talk to about it is, you know, in her pursuit of a monster, she became a monster along the way. That's what I mean. Like, no one in this show, ex actually except for Emma, is actually the only innocent person. Yeah, she got caught up with the wrong dude, but she's literally the only innocent, like, main, main character, you know? And I think that's that's such a fascinating, especially where you start off where she, oh, she's this monster. She's responsible. Everyone in her life, not just, every, like, even, you know... Especially when you dive into, like, why Emma's life was so hard, too. Like, her circumstances of, like, oh, yeah, like... 
her mom was a drunk and like what got her taken away from her mom is like she was driving and I think it was like raining too hard and her mom was drunk instead of being the one that was driving and she was like 14 crashed in a ditch got taken from her mom and now her mom also has to deal with the thing of like oh like I will always have like murderer written on the side it's like it almost seems like she's blaming herself to a certain extent, but she's also trying to say, like, I'm a good person. It's like, yeah, you made mistakes as a mother, but she's almost like saying, like, her daughter's sins are her own or whatever. Uh, it seems like the only person that kind of looked at her and believed in her was Esther. You know, the whole moment she had with her grandma, I thought that was beautiful, where it was like, oh, like, you know, uh, the first thing I'm going to do when I get out here, I'm going to cut your hair. She's like, well, I'll make sure no one else touches it because no one can do it like you do. Like, you can tell the relationship they had. If it's to the point her grandmother was like, whatever secrets we have, I will keep them. I will protect you, you know? And that was the first person she called. Not trying to talk to her mom. Who did she turn to when she was kind of breaking down? She called her grandma and was like, I love you, you know? Sadly, John was in the room when that was. But getting back to what I was trying to talk about before, uh, was the whole Mary situation, like she not having anyone she confide in, um, you know, her and her husband, they had their issues, uh, they kind of split because like obviously they also had their differences of opinions on how to handle this whole thing, but obviously for him it was like, he thought he wanted answers, just like she thought she wanted answers, but it's like she talked about living in an uh, uncertainty, she'd give anything to kind of be able to go back and live in that fantasy of hoping that her daughter's out there somewhere still alive, but not knowing the truth, now knowing the truth is like you'd give anything not to have that truth anymore, realizing like, oh, your daughter's gone, under what circumstances she was lost to you, um, they kind of start rebuilding things, but also she's having, like I said, after that, like she starts spiraling, she burns the bitch that they made because she didn't want any reminders. She starts living with the dude she's hooking up with and um, wanted to kind of start over. And she's like, oh, I can tell you anything, right? And she starts telling him about something. She, he's like, whoa, whoa, you didn't hurt that person, did you? She was like, no, of course not. It was an argument. And that's the last time we actually saw them in in the season together because I think she was like, no, like now that I've kind of thrown it out there, like I can... I can't be with him because I can never be open and honest to him about what I did because so many people keep telling her she's a good person and we see time and time again she's proved herself kind of not to be it's, it's a situation like I said she was stone thrown stir crazy but that doesn't justify the terrible things she's done um, funding and giving John the leeway to do what he did like she could have stopped him at any point in time. Even when she tried to stop him, she didn't try hard enough. She could have been like, okay, I made... She could have gone to somebody, relied to anyone about what happened, but she didn't. Hell, even him uh, being found out, that wasn't even her. She was like... Because she even goes to Jake. It's like, did you tell the police about John? It's like, oh, no. Did they catch him? It's like, Jake's the one that did it. She didn't even do it. She know the moment like, oh, like I should call... Because she knew if she did that, John knows he has footage of her killing Esther. So it was a thing of like, damn if I do, if I do if I take him down he's going to take me down with him so it's it's self preservation at that point in time it's like like I said like your journey to go after someone you claim to be a monster but on your path you know you know you can make the argument the road to hell is paved with good intentions right but you know you started with good intentions but you lost yourself hell your soul along the way you know but I guess it's like you were willing to pay whatever price was necessary to find out what happened to your daughter but it's like would your daughter even be happy of the person you became? Hell, for all we know, she, current, who she is now might be. So when the time did come and she has her confrontation with Emma and Emma tells her the truth, she didn't want to believe it. But then finding out like, wait, so this has been going on. You finally got the truth you've been searching for this entire time. And Emma was like, please tell the truth. Like, I didn't destroy your lives. Your daughter did that. The fact is your daughter, in fact, destroyed my life. She blew my situation up. So it's like, please tell the truth. And obviously, uh, Mary finds out, you know, the truth about what her daughter is going through, writing letters, you know, getting letters from Kit, probably writing back to him. It's like, yep, there's validity to all this. And when the time came, she didn't bring, she couldn't bring herself to do it. She threw Emma under the bus. Emma, who's super innocent, she blamed her. It's like, oh, she attacked me? Oh, no, you, oh, you don't want to include the fact that you were attacked by John, the rapist you hired to go after Emma? Okay, there's that. You don't want to admit the fact is that you killed an old lady for not giving you the answers you want. That your daughter that you've, you know, painted as this victim, who was a victim in her own right, but you're making it, like, no, she's, she's, uh, she was killed. Like, the fact is, Emma, uh, 
uh, Karen admitted to all the stuff that she was with Kit. Like, how can you do that? Because you can't bring yourself to disparage the image of the girl that you love, even though you know the truth. You're like, it's going to be your truth. So it's like, once again, she just dug herself deeper and deeper. I was wondering at the end, like, whether she was going to tell. I was like, come on. Are you going to tell the truth? Like, I was thinking, like, she was going to skirt around it. I didn't expect her to throw Karen under the bus. I thought at the very least being like, I don't think Karen's the one responsible, yada, yada, yada. But she couldn't because if if she presented that, then that opened up a floodgate of everything. Everything. And... It, it, it would, you know, not only destroy the image of her daughter, which, you know, which would destroy her because she's kept in, because anytime, like we see it earlier in the season, like anytime she's looking off, she's holding this angelic image of who her daughter was. But it's like, you never knew your daughter, like anything you ever pushed your daughter, like you never saw what was beneath the surface. You never saw her for what she had become, you know, what had happened to her. And I think all of that, you know drove her to be like, I, I can't let anyone else, like, this is a way to protect your daughter, protect, because in her mind, it's probably like, well, my daughter is dead, so there's, you know, she, because even Emma was like, I think she might be gone, but if she's out there, maybe Mary's hoping that she can find her daughter and protect her, it's like, you know, no mother is willing to throw their child under the bus, no matter what terrible things they've done, but it's like, You've gone through so much to save a daughter that at the end of the day won't be worth saving. It's like she's too far gone at this point in time. You know, granted, once again, it's been years. So it could easily be the fact is of, oh, right. So I've talked about the fact is that we see at least one victim in the back of her car. We don't know how much killing she's done subsequently since. And like I said, the moment Teresa's found out to be alive, because she specifically said that she ki admitted to killing my, Karen admitted to killing my daughter and everyone else. And it's just like, no one else is there to kind of corroborate that, you know? And that and that's sad, you know? Because even Emma making a promise at the end of like, these people who try to make my life a nightmare, I'm going to make theirs a lot. So I think what she's going to do is she's going to expose every little dirty thing that, um, uh, that Mary has done, and Karen doesn't even know that that includes killing her grandmother. The other person who has that evidence is John, so we even see at the end, you know, showing you how much further she's going off the deep end. She gets her own personal justice. She ends up killing the, the swim coach because of what he did. We hear the gunfire at the end, so... And also, like, her husband and her son left because Jake was look, doing it, looking into some stuff, and he found out, like, he looked at all the bank statements and stuff and realized, like, his mom had hired her. It's like, and wrote a note, you are the monster. So, I guess that sets things, I can't remember if that was before or after um, she had gone on tell. I think that was at, I mean, Jake had probably, like, that's why she probably wasn't able to get in contact with Jake because Jake had probably looked into all of that because she was like, oh, I need you, like, after she had discovered everything about Teresa. So, realizing his mom was with, like, it's like, wait, you're responsible for, like, you worked with that monster. You didn't say anything about what he was up to. You can't, because it's like, the implication is like, you know what he was up to and you said nothing the entire time. You you knew immediately when it was like, oh, he was in this area, what he'd done. When, I sh when it was like, oh, like, I... When I came to you about like, oh, I think John's the one responsible. You said nothing, so that makes once again makes you complicit with what he did. So, I mean, that's what I think sent her spiraling even more because when her own child, her only remaining child, at least in her mind, like I said, I don't know whether she knows or whether she really believes at this point in time whether Teresa is actually still alive or not. It's like, at least Teresa is dead to some extent. The Teresa she knew, but once again, that's the kind of complicated thing of like, I guess. It shows that her mom was just, and that's the sad thing people can say about, I mean, humans are always one bad, like one bad day away from becoming a monster type of thing. It, I, I feel, I can't, I remember watching a show or something that was kind of hinting at, I, I, that was a line from a show I thought was kind of interesting, was like, in, people are always one day away from potentially being a bad guy, like you doing this one thing could, you know, change, and it's like we saw that with, you know, Mary, like I said, extenuating circumstances led them to becoming the monsters that they are, but that won't justify the monsters they became in, in the long run. So I just, I, like I said, I just thought that was such a, a fascinating 
develop. That's why it's like in the beginning you feel a little sympathetic and you're just like, yeah, you cross the line, but you lose more and more and more sympathy as the season goes on. Because like the moment she confronted Emma, like you all, because even John at the beginning is like, what are you going to do? Like it seemed like he was like, I don't want to find her just so you can kill her. Granted, he went off his own deep end as well, but. That's the effed up thing. He hasn't killed anyone, which isn't to say anything. He's still a monster that destroyed women's lives. He's a fucking rapist monster in his own right. So it's like, you know, it's it's uh, apples and oranges of like the worst rotten kind, you know? So it's not like one's better than the other. It's not like, oh, he's never murdered one, so that makes him better. Like, no, he's just as much of a monster. He's just a different kind of monster than she is, you know? Uh, I mean... He destroyed lives. She's destroying lives as well in many different regards. So, but I, I would, like I said, like when Emma and Mary confronted, like when it was all said and done, I was wondering where things would have gone from there. So I actually thought they were going to dispose of John's body at the end. Like, oh, but they just put him in a closet. I was like, oh, I guess they thought he was dead maybe. Uh, but no, uh, I thought they were going to dump his body in the water. Turned out not to be the case. But so at the end of the day, Emma's still the only one that hasn't killed anyone. She didn't kill... Uh, Teresa, she didn't kill John. She's the only one that doesn't have um, any blood or terrible stuff. Well, she has blood on her hands, but, you know, it's all been self-defense, you know, so. But then you also go back to, like, a, uh, she still loved Parker at the end, too. It's, it's, a, like, it's complicated, but it, like I said, I think she's, like, the only innocent person you know, necessarily, like I said, amongst the main, main characters, like, like I said, you do have characters like Tom and Jess and anyone else that got mixed up in the whole St. Jerome thing, except for, like, the bad people associated with St. Jerome, but, uh, yeah. I have been talking about him the entire time, but let's kind of focus on John for a moment. He, like I said, he is, without a doubt, a monster. He is a monster that admitted himself to be a monster, but like I said, he made it seem like he was without his claws and his fangs anymore. And like I said, they're sharper than ever. So, so like I said, I think maybe condemning Emma made him feel better about his situation because he's saying that it's actually kind of Mary's fault that this all happened because it's like, I told you I didn't want to do this. You're the one that kind of pushed and even blackmailed me into doing all of this and then it's like now once again Mary's not taking responsibility for the the beast that she's let out of the cage which isn't to say he wouldn't have gone down this route anyway Mary just basically it's like you basically armed a um a monster with a revolver essentially like you have a revolver and you loaded the gun and handed it to a child type of situation like that it I, I butchered that metaphor I was trying to go for. Sorry. But, so, I'm not saying that, like, she's complete, like, it's like everything he did was 100% on her. It's on him, too. He's, but he's trying to control his impulses and stuff like that. That's why that argument about this show, I think, is, you know, like I said, I think it's a, um, a, a conversation about can people change? Can like it seemed like he was in a process of changing. Like if Mary hadn't thrown him into this situation, could he have stayed a good person, or would he have eventually cracked anyway? That once again, was he just one bad day away, crossing paths with some random woman? Was he one step away? Because even like and uh, what's her name, uh, Andrea, like the woman that Mary had looked into, it was like. Uh, which she now knows that he's responsible for that. Another thing she hasn't said jack shit about because she would have to admit that like their connection and everything and what he knows about her. So once again, self-preservation. But she was saying like what started it was like she was like, oh, like I said hi to him or, or something. And then he came to me and said I didn't say that I was rude to him, that I didn't say anything to him. She, she was like, that's not something I would do. That's not who I am. So once again, he has his warped view on things. Just like Mary is like, oh, Mary's mine. You, you're mine, Mary. Mary, like, oh, God. we're like, aren't we two peas in a pod? Like, it's like we understand each other. A whole element of the show, too, is like we see each like, you know, it's a whole thing about like seeing someone like I see you so it's like he sees her for her she sees him for him it's like like I said they're monsters in their own right and maybe that's what kind of brought them together once again the irony behind it considering the whole you know oh Emma was with a monster as well so it's like you know but it turns out she's the only one that walked away not becoming a monster granted these circumstances might be what eventually turned Emma into that it's like you know you guys treating her like a monster she might end up becoming what you guys thought she was 
just so that she can take you get down and get her daughter back. But the whole thing is she has to be better because she doesn't want her daughter to grow up under those circumstances. It's like, I want to be free of the past so that I can just be me and clear the airwaves about who I am so I can just be a mother to my daughter, a daughter I haven't been able to see in years. That You know, she had her first interactions with her daughter in the confines of this um, season, you know, that moment. Obviously, they even had the whole hetero, um, heterochromia uh, situation going on. Um, but regardless, um, he's able to keep his urges at bay, but like, like what the point I was trying to make earlier was like, is there such thing as redemption? Can people change, especially people under his regards? Like, I think, you know, not even just in the confines of the show, I'm sure people have varying opinions about that just in real life as well. And I, I don't know, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, would he have, I feel like he would have done it at any point in time, but you know, it's a whole thing of like, oh, like, you know, at least he was able to seclude himself working the job he did. So, like I said, Mary kind of supplied him with the power and position to do what he's done. Like, I, I, I don't know. It, it's not like you're trying to, I'm trying to redeem him in any shape or form by being like, it's kind of on Mary. Like I said, he's just as much of a monster before and after. Because once again, he got away with a lot more than what he actually did. Two women is all he got taken down for when in actuality there's a total of 14. Now 15 if you include it. Well, I don't know if that 14 includes the woman um, he had attacked over the course of the season. In the season, I don't know if that necessarily there could have potentially been another victim with that lady in that hotel room, you know. So hell, even him attacking Tom because even then I, I didn't understand like what the point of that was. Like Tom was looking for the that little girl he saw kind of injecting herself. And I was like, okay. So at first good, he was like, oh, I think she went that way. The doors open. I was like, did he send him the wrong direction? Why? And then he, I was like, why? He wasn't even looking in your direction, especially cause you two kind of hit it off. But he did the whole thing of pretending to be the good guy. That he is hell. He's it's, it's sad and creepy how good he is at getting close to people. He got close to the social worker. was named Gail, the woman who, um, set up the whole Emma thing. She'd even made that whole comment about, oh, Emma stole a kitten and all those kittens were stillborn. That should have been a sign. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, lady? Um, once again, just like everyone vilifying Emma. She's seen as a bad guy when in actuality, you know, that I keep going back to that. I can't stop harping on that point because it's so sad that she's been painted the villain even though she's not. She's literally the only non-bad guy in that, you know, a bunch of people, you know. Um but the reason why he attacked Tom is because he needed Tom out of the way because he could use that as an excuse to get close to Emma to kind of – because it, it's like a power thing for him because it's like – because I think for him it's like if I get this truth, Mary's going to be indebted to me. And it's like – like I, I think in some twisted way he thinks there's going to be – of them. I think that's the delusion of why he is the monster that he is because he creates this delusion and this connection between him and people. That's why like he talked about getting so close to people and kind of giving them what they need. Like even the whole Gail thing, we found out like he set up that fake date of like who she was waiting for someone. We see at the end of the episode he deleted the dating profile. It's like, "Oh, it was him. He set that all in motion." So it shows you how much of a monster, how much of a predator he is, you know? And once again, it's just like how easily that switch can get flipped on for him. Hell, maybe the argument is the this, this switch never got flipped off. He's just always able to kind of brush off, brush it off. Like that that switch is probably on 24-7. Um, and he just, I mean, the argument could be he just using Emma, I mean, uh, Mary and Emma as an excuse to do the bad things he wants to do. He wants to say like, oh, they sent me down, in particular, Mary sent me down this dark road. It's like, nah, you just need an excuse to do what you do. You know, yes, they, Mary is complicit in what you did, but you were going to do it. You just needed someone to be your excuse, your outlet to be like, this gave me the opportunity and the, um, they're the reason why I've done, I backpedaled, yada, yada, yada. So it's no personal responsibility. That's a big thing between him and Mary. Neither wants to take their own, the personal responsibility under the circumstances. Him for what he's done, her for what she's done, as well as what her daughter's done, and is willing to condemn someone else just to save face. Not only for her daughter, but the entire family, because their family would be scrutinized because, wait, you helped scrutinize an innocent woman, and your daughter was the one that was a monster all along, kicking it with Kit, was in a relationship with him, you know, so... 
we do see, see at the end that John isn't dead and he's there with Bodhi because Bodhi was there coming after Karen because he wanted, hey, Karen's already taken the fall for all this other stuff. I'm going to make her take the fall for Jess and all this other stuff as well. But I don't know whether that's implying John kills him or it's like, hey, I can work with you. You need Karen. Don't worry. I'm a hunter down for you. Just have my back with circumstances going forward and I'll have yours. Like maybe that's what they're potentially setting up. Not let John kill him. I, I don't know. But it shows that, hey, John's still alive and well, which is terrible for everyone because, hey, Mary, he knows your dirty secret. And he could use that to burn you, which obviously Emma could use that information, not only for personal revenge, because, hey, you killed my grandma, but also exposing you for who you really are, so uh, how that circumstance, and when that's, like, obviously, like, if he's continuing to hunt Emma, that could play a role in that, you know, it's sad at the end of the day, like, the con uh, one other connection she made was to Tom, and Tom's even saying, like, hey, I can protect you, but Emma's like, no one can, it's like, you know, Everyone that's ever kind of promised to protect her is kind of going in some right, you know, because she feels like she can't protect herself. She can't protect anyone as well. She can't protect her daughter. She wasn't able to protect Jess, um, wasn't able to protect Rose, which Rose, all kinds of mess up. We'll get to that in a second. But um, I'm wondering, I, I doubt we're done, done. Like, I'm curious, like, what's going to, like, obviously we see at the end, like, Emma's on the road, kind of doing her own thing, trying to bring everyone down, kind of trying to expose them for everything. I'm sure... All the stuff in St. James with St. Jerome, she probably tried to expose that while also clearing her name, trying to get back to her daughter. That's kind of first and foremost, but she's got so many people against her. Yeah, on her side. Tom is on her side because I think he believes her. Pete is on her side because he believes her about a lot. So, But he's also self-preservation too because like he's wrapped up in all of this. So, But it is also that level of, I think he is also in love with Emma, but I think... He's like that with any woman that he's, you know, or not just any woman. Well, maybe certain women, because we don't know if maybe it's been a similar circumstance with any of his other female um, patients or as Lisa and Emma's special cases, maybe because their situations. Because I didn't, well, I'll, I'll talk, I was about to say I haven't talked about the St. Jerome situation or what that necessarily was, but I'll get to that in a second. So, I, I'm curious, like, to see what ends up happening potentially with John. But, um, since, since I was talking about it, uh, the St. Jerome situation, I was curious what that was all about. And for that to be revealed to be like, oh, it's about, because especially when we, get, we find out, like, Bodhi's connected to it, because we saw that, because our first element to that was him with the, the key and everything. Because I'm curious what role his wife played in it. Because I figured, like, the St. Jerome supplied the girls. Because I think they need young girls, like, well, you know, fertilizing their, like, their eggs. I don't know whether it's, like, they're saving families that aren't able to have kids of their own, like, and then maybe, maybe they're making a profit off of. Because, obviously, like, um, Rose's mom is smoking, and we see her kind of putting that lotion on. And, like, obviously, it's, like, she's so obsessed with that place. But also, Rose made that whole point of, like, her mom is, like, trying to keep her safe. And it's, like, trying to keep her safe from dangerous men. So it's, like... Did she, at what, like, has she known the entire time about what her husband was up to? Or did she only overhear what was going, like, I don't know. It seems like, especially that conversation, he's like, oh, like, you're doing the Lord's work and stuff like that. It seems like she's in the know about it. She was a willing accomplice, potentially. I don't know. Because you could definitely tell Rose is jacked up in many different regards. Like, you could tell early on that she became obsessed with Emma. Especially, especially when she came into Emma's place using her toothbrush, wearing her clothes and everything. Until she found out about Tom and it set her off. Because it's like, no, Emma's mine. It's like, wow. I mean, and it... Because I think Jess kind of did the same thing. She latched on to Emma to get away from her circumstances. What was kind of going on um, at uh, St. Jerome. Uh, I'm assuming it had already happened to her. And she was... She was talking, well, because it turns out, because uh, we already knew Rose was kind of messed up already, but then like, she was like, oh, you and the dumb cop, you're dumb, it's, it's okay, uh, I, I love you, and she was like, no, but, you know, Emma's like, we're friends, but then, like, she's the one that drew, um, she's the one that got in contact with Mary and told her where Emma was. It was like, oh, come on, Rose, and she's like, oh, she's already hurt one girl, which is so effed up considering you're literally the one that killed Jess. And the reason why you're pissed at her is because she was trying to tell you the truth about your dad. Both of them were. Jess was trying to tell you the truth, as well as Emma, you didn't want to listen. You just couldn't, you weren't in a situation to kill Emma like you did Jess. But to be fair, she created the circumstances which she knew uh, Emma would get punished. Because this way, you get punished uh, for what you... 
um, did to me. You broke my heart. You betrayed me. It's like you asked her not to lie to you anymore, and she didn't. She told you how it was, but, you know, like, again, it shows you how effed up she is. But it's like she killed Jess because it's like, oh, she was spreading lies about my daddy. But then it's like there were lies right then. It's like, yeah, but her mom comes in, and it's like you got to get away from her. Like, you don't get to raise her. And it's like, wait, you told me they were all lies, and now she realizes her dad was a liar. Now you're a murderer because you're trying to protect your dad. And it's just like, man, like I said, no one is innocent. Except for, like I said, Tom, Jess, um, the other girl that died, Jay, and um, or Freya, and Esther. Um, did I say Tom already? Like, there's only like a handful, and they, but those are the characters that aren't like the main, main characters. Every other main, main character, as well as um, some of the other side characters, are messed up. And like, there's no, like that's the thing, like there's no one to... Emma's like the only character you can fully root for. Her and Tom, they're like the only ones you can fully root for. Pete, you're kind of like, ah, ah, still not innocent though. But it just, man, it just makes you, it's like, it's a very, it's actually depressing when you think about it. Because it's like, oh, everyone sucks. Everyone, majority of the people in this show suck. Ah, ah, you know? So, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um. It, 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 it creates a very interesting situation in the story where it's supposed to be like, oh, here's this one person you hate, and you find, like, and you vilify, and like, oh, she, you potentially set her up to be a monster, but you kind of get the story mainly from her perspective to kind of be more sympathetic, and only for you to breach out and reach out throughout the, from her character and reach out to all these other characters that she's both directly and indirectly connected to to find out, oh, you guys are all pieces of shit. Okay, literally the one character who's set up to be, oh, she's a piece of shit, she's terrible, blah, 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 blah. Ended up not being being the least shitty character. Yes, she has her complications, like I said, because of the Parker thing. But even then, like that, just because of a bad relationship doesn't make her a bad person. So it's just like it's it's fascinating. At the time of me recording this, tell me your secrets has not been renewed for a second season yet. Um, hopefully, it gets a second season because I'd love to see where they take us. As you know, like I said, it brought up you know Emma going to clear her name, but also like bringing down everyone, like in particular Mary, who tried to. Uh, destroy her reputation. Also, getting her daughter back from Theresa. Uh, I keep wanting to say Theresa. Theresa and whatever situation ends up going, you know, things kind of whatever that route leads to. Whether it's exposing her and Ma or Mary, or exposing both of them. The whole, like I said, John is most likely getting hired by Bodie to hunt her down so they can put, you know, Jess's murder and just everything going down on her as well. Because I'm curious, is she going to go back? Because it might be her on the road. I don't think she's going back to Shane, Saint uh, James because she can't because she she her name is out there as Emma Hall. So like everyone knows who she is. So Karen's gonna have to get a new identity going forward. So it's like she's gonna be on the run while probably like going back close enough to probably bring Mary down to expose everything. Like I said, while also tracking down. Um, uh, Teresa, but also like what role will Pete be? Will Pete be somewhat the ally she needs under these circumstances? Because she doesn't really have anyone she can really trust or turn to under the circumstances. What does this mean for Rose now that it's like, oh, I killed Jess. I, even she left a message on Emma's phone talking about what she did. Now, I'm assuming uh, Emma's going to get that now knowing that Rose is the one that did like what that's going to turn into. Uh, once again, well, no, I, I just thought about it. No, she has Tom. Like, if Tom decides to help her out, which I think he is, because he's like, let me keep you safe because I care about you. So maybe he's going to, tr maybe he might be the only person she can turn it, turn to and trust. She might unwillingly end up trusting Pete, but it's like, well, Pete's got to look out for himself as well. But he also doesn't want Emma hurt, so it's probably going to be him trying to make a compromise about like, I will keep Emma safe, yada yada yada. Like I said. It just depends on how a lot of stuff goes. Like I said, a lot of this is speculation on my part. Maybe John didn't. Maybe John did kill Bodie, but I don't think so. I, I think it's like they both want Karen, so this is a uh, an opportunity to kind of go after her because I'm sure she's. I'm, I'm sure, like I said, she's probably going to get a new identity potentially if there's a second season. Um, Try to expose everything and everyone involved, and in, you know, so. Uh, Probably would get a lot more view on what Teresa's up to maybe this season. Um, maybe she decides to reach out to her mom potentially. Also, considering the Mary thing, what about Jake and Saul, her husband, like, well, her ex, like, whatever that circumstances is, like, you know, I'm assuming Jake ended up telling Saul the truth. So it's like they both bailed on her, so she's kind of alone. 
Now she's got two dead bodies under her belt, that being Esther, now also the coach, you know. Yes, he was a monster, but she kind of, you know, obviously she has a tendency to take justice into her own hand, except when it benefits her, you know, because it's like, oh, you didn't, sure as hell didn't do that with John, you know, so it's a complicated thing that I'm curious to see the continuation of these complications, where all these stories end up taking us going forward into season two. What other stuff potentially can, you know, will Emma potentially get wrapped up in? Because I'm assuming it's just going to be continuing and finishing up these storylines like the saint jerome thing isn't settled it's still an ongoing thing plus you know that so like not unless there's something else she gets wrapped up in but i think these two particular storylines their continuations is where we're going to probably continue out not unless maybe we might get some new characters along the way under her new identity under the new life she's trying to create for herself while she's trying to deal with all this we'll ultimately have to wait and see i, I do hope the show comes back for a second season because i'd love to see uh, what that would necessarily entail. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the force, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.